Hey everyone, Julian here and welcome to episode 8 of the Learning Flask series. In this episode we're going to be learning about dynamic URLs. What are dynamic URLs? How to create them in our Flask applications? So uh, high level, what is a dynamic URL? It's a unique URL that isn't hard coded into our application. I mean, can you imagine you've got an app with users, you allow users to sign up, create an account, have a profile. Well, you wouldn't hard code every profile into your app. You know, you wouldn't create a route for each individual user. That'd be crazy. So we create dynamic URLs. So let's jump straight in and learn all about that. As always, text-based version of this guide in more detail. I'll throw a link in the description. And we've just got our development server open in the browser. We've got a terminal and we've got Visual Studio Code or any editor that you've got will do the job. Flask run, let's get up and running and let's just go to our home. So if you haven't been following along, it's not a problem. Just go ahead and do what we do. We're gonna create a new route and we're gonna create some dynamic content. So first things first, let's give ourselves some space. Let's go ahead and app.root. I'm going to go ahead and call it profile for now. We'll create our function. Return render template and then we need to give it a path to that HTML. So public public profile.html. So let's go ahead and create that HTML file in our public directory. As always, we are going to import our base templates with the uh, extend sorry I've, I find it really difficult to uh, talk and type so extends public templates public template .html, and that's because that is the path to our base template we have templates, public templates, and public template.html. So let's create a title We're using the block title. And we'll call this profile. Go ahead and close our block title with end block. And then, of course, we need to create our block main for the main content. So there we go, we've got the, uh, we've got another typo, which I seem to be very good at doing. So let's uh, use our bootstrap classes, container.row and a column. We'll give this an h1 of profile. And guys, if you are using Visual Studio Code, um, what you can do is just type the uh, tag that you want and then hit tab and you can see you get this uh, emit abbreviation pop-up come up and just hit tab and it will go ahead and auto complete whatever you're using but like I said you can use any editor of your choosing let me sort the spacing out here quickly format there we go and save so if we come back to our browser and oops I'm already getting ahead of myself trying to create a dynamic URL so there we go, forward slash profile, and we come to our profile template. So how do we go about creating a dynamic URL? And what is a dynamic URL? Well, can you imagine if you've got an app that allows users to create an account and have a profile? The odds are you might want them to come to, you know, slash profile slash their username. So let's just put that in for now. Now, what happens if we try to go to this route in our in our browser of course that works because we've hard coded it into our application but the odds are that we're not going to go ahead and hard code a username into every uh, url of our app that would be crazy so a way we can do this is by adding a variable into our URL. And we do that with the two opposing arrows syntax. So 
let's say we want to collect a username in our URL. So we can go ahead and put that into the URL using the two opposing arrows. We then need to pass that variable into our function. So again, I'm just going to use the username keyword here in our function. Now, if we just go and print the username, you'll see that if we now, if I change this to something like Tom and go ahead and click return, you can see here we are printing Tom. And this is a dynamic URL. We've created a URL that will dynamically accept uh, arguments in the URL itself. And then we can capture that as a variable and we can do something with it. So you can imagine if you do have thousands of users and either you, you know, they create uh, unique usernames or more likely have some kind of user ID that's associated with their profile. You know, we would put in a user ID, that's something unique to that user, hit return, and then we've captured that URL or that variable in the URL. We can then look up that user in a database. We in a database we can collect their information, we can generate their profile on the fly. So that's kind of what we're going to do in this episode, but in a much more simple form. So what I want to do is just create a uh, kind of mock database just using a dictionary. And I'm going to copy and paste something in because I don't think you guys need to see me type it out. So I'm just copying this in. And we've just got here a dictionary with uh, the keys as usernames and then uh, values in, you know, it's got a little sub dictionary within that key with a name, a bio and a uh, Twitter handle. So we've got uh, Armin Ronica, who's the creator of Flask. We've got Guido Van Rossum, who's a creator of Python. And we threw in Elon Musk for a bit of fun. So we've got three users in our users database. What do we want to do? Well, we want our app to behave in a way that when somebody comes to a profile slash usernames in the URL, we want it to look up this user in our database and then we want to render the profile.html with that user's information. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, in fact, first, let's just try it here in Python before we move into any HTML. So we know we've got this username variable coming in to the URL and we're going to use that to look up our users in our dictionary slash database. So first of all, why don't we do if username in users, which is our goodness me, if the username is in our users database, then let's just go ahead and print users and we'll fetch the key, we'll fetch the user with a key username. Let's just go ahead and save that. So if we just go ahead and copy Elon Musk and go ahead and stick that in the URL and go ahead and hit enter. There we go. We can see in our terminal, we've got name Elon Musk. Bio is a technology entrepreneur, investor and engineer and the Twitter handle of at Elon Musk. So just to recap what we've done there, we've captured the variable for username in the URL, we passed it into the function, we've done a quick lookup in our users dictionary, and then we've found that user by their key, which is the username, and we've printed out some information about that user. So why don't we go ahead and um, return this user information to our HTML, to our template, and then we can actually render that and make something a little nicer. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put user equals none. And then if username in users, I want to then grab our user from the database slash dictionary and store that in the user variable. So if username in users, I want user equals uh, users, and then we'll look them up by username. So now you know, in the Elon Musk example, our user variable would have all of this dictionary information about our user. 
and then I want to return that to our template with user equals user. So let's go ahead and add some basic HTML in here just to display some information about our user. So again, we are using Bootstrap, but of course you do not have to. I'm gonna create a card and in the card body, let's create a H4 heading with our uh, user and that's uh, no in fact I want to also return the username to the view so username equals username and user equals user so let's go ahead and put the username as the h4 heading now under this h4 let's go and separate that with a horizontal row and then we will have the um, name bio and their twitter handle so we'll do that in a uh, p tag and let's maybe make that a let's make that strong and we'll put our user name we'll look that up using the key of name and then underneath that we can just put another paragraph with a class of text muted will just give us some nice gray text and then we'll have the user bio and then underneath that let's do another p tag with maybe some italics and our user dot no we're not using dot syntax we are using the dictionary so user dot twitter handle Okay, so we've laid out a very basic profile for our users. So now we've still got Elon Musk up in the URL. So if we go ahead and reload that page. There we go. We get a nice card with the uh, username, the uh, user's actual name, their bio, and their Twitter handle. So what happens if we go ahead and throw in a, uh, a name that isn't in our database? So let's just put Tom again. He's not in our database. It's still rendering the uh, the username variable that we put in the URL, but of course that user isn't in our um, dictionary, so we don't get in any of their information. But we can validate for that. So why don't we do some validation in our template itself? So why don't I go ahead and just copy out this? We'll let the uh, username variable come into our template but we can use some of the ginger syntax. So let's do if user, and then let's throw in an else, and then I'm gonna close off this if statement with an and if. So if we've got a user, I want to get, go ahead and render our user's profile. If not, I'm just gonna throw in a p tag saying user not found. So if we go ahead and save that, refresh the page, and there we go, user not found because Tom is not in our user's database. So let's go ahead and grab Guido, and we'll replace Tom with Guido. And there we go, we get some information about Guido Van Rossum, the legendary creator of the Python programming language. And let's go ahead and grab some information for Armin Ronica. And there we go, we get our user's profile rendering nicely. So that's pretty much it for dynamic URLs. Um, in fact, there is something else I do want to cover, um, but what I'm going to do, uh, as you've seen, we've just got one variable coming into the URL. With dynamic URLs, you can have multiple different variables coming in. So we're not gonna create a new template for now, for this example, I'm gonna create a new root and I'm just gonna call it slash multiple slash foo slash bar slash baz. And again, we're separating all of our variables with a forward slash and we are uh, telling our root that we're expecting three variables using the opposing arrows here. And then let's create a function. I'm just gonna call this multi. 
and now we need to pass the values that we're expecting in the URL into our function. So we've got foo, we've got bar, and we've got baz. And all I'm going to do is return, let's create an f string, and inside there, let's give ourselves three sets of formatted strings that we want to drop into our f string here. So let's put foo is foo. And then we could put bar is bar. And of course, baz is. And we'll plug that gap with baz. So there we go. No templates or anything, just a simple multiple. And then we'll pass in some variables. So let's go back here in our URL. Multiple. So as we can see, I've already been experimenting. So let's just put foo bar baz. And there we go. Foo is foo, bar is bar, and baz is baz. And of course, they don't have to be called that. We could put Tom, John, and Amy. Foo is Tom, bar is John, baz is Amy. So we passed three variables into our root. We've grabbed them using the opposing arrow syntax in the URL, of course, all separated with a forward slash, which is required. We then pass our variables that we're expecting into our function, and then we can do something with them. So, you know, I've just dropped these variables into a formatted string that we're then just dumping back out into the browser. So that's pretty much it for dynamic URLs. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. As always, I do have a text-based version of this, which you can go ahead and work through. There's a bit more detail in here. So head over to the link in the description for more. As always, if you're enjoying this kind of content, do let me know. Feel free to subscribe, drop a like on the video if you're finding it helpful. And uh, I hope you're enjoying the series. If you've got any feedback, I would love to hear from you. So yeah. Drop them in the comments below and as always, I will see you on the next one.